world is searching for new sources of green energy that can help meet the expected demand for power from AI data centers. One company with a possible solution is H&O International, who's working on hydrogen-based clean energy. And with me is the chairman and CEO, Donald Owens. Great to see you again. Thank you, Thank and you very much, Jane. Thanks so, for being here. Yeah, and, and I know you and I have talked about the challenges of hydrogen energy. Mm -hmm. What are those? How do you plan to overcome them? Okay, very good question. In fact, um, the main challenges with uh, with uh, with uh, hydrogen adoption is availability, because uh, hydrogen right now is not really available anywhere, and and then some of the costs, and uh, what happens with availability and how we uh, plan on uh, uh, solving it is there is a lack of a distribution network for hydrogen gas. Most of the time, uh, it's all uh, uh, manufactured in one central location or two or three central locations, and those central locations do not allow it to be distributed. What what we are really trying to do is build a, 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 hydrogen, a, a hydrogen infrastructure. Mm. And so the way we're going to solve it is that part of the problem is the fact that you do have to have, you have such high transportation costs with the model that is being used now. And so when you have a, a, a wider distribution of hydrogen production, you have little or no transportation costs, and then you can bring it down, mm -hmm. uh, bring the cost down to hydrogen and make it, make it more available. Yeah. So that's the way we intend on solving that problem is by creating a very large, fast hydrogen network mm -hmm. of uh, distribution yeah. production. And then what makes HNO different from some other companies in okay. the hydrogen very industry? Good. Very good. What happens is most people or most companies that are in the hydrogen business, and what makes us different is that we have uh, decided to build and, uh, and focus on a distributed uh, network. We're going to build a, a, a uh, distributed network as opposed to a, a distributed production network as opposed to a centralized uh, production network. Now, most of the, all the companies now, they all focus it on very large production. I mean, millions and millions of tons of hydrogen based on uh, very, very large uh, systems of, uh, of, of, of power that's uh, uh, renewable power, but it's still a centralized system. Okay. And that centralized system, even though you can use a lot of that hydrogen for some of your commercial customers, some of your uh, industrial customers, it really won't work. That model won't work at all for uh, the, the emerging markets, of, which is transportation. And so our focus is on that transportation market. And, it's, and we happen to understand that our model is the only one that will work for that transportation. Can you go into a little more depth on that, on what your model is, the um, kind of distributed production model? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. It's two things that, that, that is the basis of our model. And one of them is what would I call anywhere and everywhere power. The second thing is what we need is, is the equipment that you need to generate uh, a hydrogen, which is your electrolyzers, your compressors, and your storage. But the anywhere, everywhere power is really the key. Now, what I mean by anywhere, everywhere power is that hydrogen requires power to, to be produced. You can't mm -hmm. just expect the sun to make hydrogen, hydrogen okay. gas. So you actually have to have a lot of power. But what makes us a little bit different, too, is that we've partnered with companies that are uh, that's, that can bring us anywhere from four to six megawatts of power to any location. Now, when I say any location, uh, I really do mean any location because what happens is that uh, 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 without having the power at the location where you want, you can't produce the hydrogen. So it's very important uh, to, to be able to have that the, the highly distributed network of power. How much power does it take to operate this hydrogen okay, network? Good, good question. <laughs> what happens is, and the beauty of the way our anywhere and everywhere power works, we only need about one and a half, uh, 1.25 to maybe two megawatts of power mm -hmm. to produce what most customers need at a, uh, at a, what we call a local distribution point. That means you have about two megawatts, maybe three or four megawatts of power left over that you brought in that you can use for all kinds of other things, including, um, I mean, the list goes on forever. Um, you can use some excess power to power homes. You can power uh, 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 micro data centers. You can power Bitcoin mining. You can do quite a bit with that extra power because 
the power that you need to produce the hydrogen is only about a little less than two megawatts. But our whole system and our whole anywhere, any, anywhere, everywhere power uh, uh, system means you, you can bring at least four to six megawatts wherever you are, wherever the sun shines, you can bring in that kind of a power. And with that extra power, you can do a lot of other things. Who are your customers? Our customers, our main customers, the hydrogen market has a lot of customers right now. Existing customers are mostly refineries, uh, some of your industrial processes, uh, some of your very large commercial uses of ammonia and stuff like that. But our customer is the emerging market. It's the transportation market. Uh, things that include uh, uh, applications like buses, uh, uh, vehicles, uh, Class 8 trucks, uh, uh, marine applications. But all of those applications uh, will not fit the model that is out there now, which is the centralized model. That model has to be what we are, what we are currently doing, which is this distributed model. Mm -hmm. So we act, so our customers is that transportation model because in order for those customers to be able to effectively use the hydrogen, the hydrogen cost has to be low. Mm -hmm. And because uh, otherwise it won't make sense to use hydrogen because the cost is too high. And whenever you involve transportation of hydrogen, you increase the cost. Yeah. So that's uh, mm -hmm. that's what our customers are principally. And you recently did a, a deal with a Texas utility, mm -hmm. right? Was that like a partnership, or who was that with, and how does okay. that work? Yeah, it, yeah. Actually, actually, it wasn't a, it wasn't exactly a utility, but what it is is a uh, a transportation company. Uh, okay. It's a company that also uh, uh, leases uh, Class A trucks because mm -hmm. their whole uh, model is uh, they want people to be able to start doing things shipping, et cetera, with hydrogen because it's clean. But in order to do that, you have to have some pretty decent costs of your fuel because it needs to be commensurate with what it costs for diesel. So, but our, our uh, since we we're able to get our costs down so low, we were able to contract with them for them to buy all the hydrogen that we can make. And in fact, uh, now that we have, uh, in fact, that's down in, in, in outside of Houston, place called Katy, Texas. Mm -hmm. But we are also going to be uh, doing another deal with them right outside of Dallas okay. because they have a a, 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 a a business model where they are leasing these uh, class eight um, uh, fuel cell trucks and they have to be able to get, uh, you know, low cost fuel in order for those systems to work. Mm -hmm. And then explain HNO's kind of role in the transition to clean energy. What, what's the future for okay. the company? Okay, okay. Our our role, like, you know, the transition to green is, 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 is going to be a long road. But in essence, for the we, we anticipate that the transportation portion of of uh, of green uh, energy and the elect conversion of electricity will be a big Part of that transition. What HNOI is planning on doing by developing this uh, network of uh, distributed hydrogen is to kind of lead the way to show people how it's done and how it can still be profitable. Because the whole bottom line with any, anything when you're uh, developing a, a, a new system is that you still have to be able to make money at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so our thing is that uh, we want to we know we can make money, but we can also show people how it's done for this particular market and for the market that's emerging for hydrogen. So uh, we, we plan on leading the way uh, for uh, uh, for how green hydrogen should be produced. Okay. And uh, as far as future is concerned, uh, our immediate future is that we are planning on doing Regulation 1A. Oh. We have a Regulation 1A. Uh, being set up within the next several weeks. And we plan on raising uh, funds so that we can indeed execute on our, uh, uh, our process of building this hydrogen infrastructure and this hydrogen network. Now, what happens in the future, we just don't know. But one of the things we have uh, uh, found out that we kind of possess is this anywhere, everywhere power. Mm -hmm. Because we are able to bring in uh, the right the right amount of power to produce hydrogen, but also the kind of power that you can use for a lot of other applications. But uh, but our our emphasis is always going to be hydrogen production. But 
no telling what happens in the future. Just like uh, I can promise you that uh, the uh, original founders of Apple had in 1976 had no idea that the iPhone was coming 30 years later. Right. I mean, right? everything builds on <laughs> yeah, everything. That's so, right. Exactly yeah. right. Don, thank you so much for the update. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for having thank me.